What's the difference between genetics and talent? I don't know, but maybe there's nothing. But the word the word <laughs> talent just ticks me off because talent makes it sound like the person that you're talking about who has talent didn't work hard. Talent does not exist. Eliminate that word from your vocabulary. Just stop saying it. Okay, maybe that's a little too far. It does exist and we can't neglect that, but I hate that word. I hate talking about the word talent. If you've been following along on the Bunk Bros the last few weeks, you have seen just how heated this debate can get me going. And ugh. So here I am today to clarify my stance on this topic of talent. I yeah. don't know. I don't know a lot about this guy. I don't know if he's naturally very gifted or and Drew said Drew said nobody he's like, nobody's naturally. Don't say that. That's just <laughs> nobody's naturally gifted. It's are, hard work. Are you? Are you serious right now? Right, this I is what I can't stand it. I can't, I can't stand it when people say, oh, he's so talented. Like, if somebody says that about I mean, me, I would, I would, truth. I would get do mad. You not I would think, say, do you know do how many you, hours I've you, had to ride my bike to get this talented? Like, no. Ta look, I was not born Drew, this good at riding a bike. I have worked my freaking Drew, butt off for the last 15 Drew, years. Do you to not get this think good. that? Okay, That's not okay, talent. So obviously, Drew, obviously it's, it's, it's both talent and hard work, and we can argue about what percentage is hard work and what percentage is talent. But less than ten percent talent. Oh <laughs> my god, dude, you're absolutely out of your 90, mind 90, right now. Ninety percent grit, ten percent. Yeah, talent. but what does ten percent and ninety percent means? Like what uh, uh, compared to what? Um, I, 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 think <laughs> the, I just I, like. I, I know that. I think at the highest level, uh, honestly, like. I think yeah. it's more more talent than training. Drew, you're Drew, you're absolutely no, I wouldn't out say of that, your mind right now. I'm not the only one that thinks this. You know, there's this pretty cerebral guy, Nietzsche. Hear what he has to say about it. Do not talk about giftedness or inborn talents. One can name great men of all kinds who were very little gifted, and they acquired greatness. So I guess I'm not the only cerebral person who has this opinion. All right, so I'm I have like a you. feeling. I have a feeling that we're not on the same page. Like I don't know how we define talent because Ooh, there's talent. Good thing you, good thing you there's brought talent that up. and there's genetics. Genetics can be measured. Like obviously we have different DNA. We have different genetics. We have different True. genes that set us apart from others so, that so make us more yeah. prone for whatever endurance sports I, and i agree I with that pulled up the Webster's but talent isn't necessarily genetics i don't think talent is like some Her, dude magical... let adam let adam dictionary yeah. right now. all right i'm gonna i'm gonna okay. set the definition out there because i think there is a little <clears> bit of semantics <throat> that we're getting into or you guys were getting into last week okay so talent natural aptitude or skill for something yeah natural okay natural i don't Genetic. i don't like that word either natural Relating to genes or hereditary? Yeah, completely, or heredity. completely different. You can have really good genes and not be a natural. What? When I say somebody's talented, what I am referring to is their genetic potential. And I think that's what most people refer to when they say somebody is talented. Mm, I don't, I don't, that's not what I mean when I say it. <laughs> okay. One of the biggest problems that we faced with on the bunk rows when we talked about talent was like, what the heck is it? Like, how do we even define what talent is? And we all kind of had our own ideas, but at the end of the day, it's kind of hard to explain or give a, a, a written thought out definition of exactly what is talent. See, I'm okay with saying genetics. I don't know why that is. I'm okay with saying somebody has a genetic advantage, but to say that they're talented, like, ugh, something just gets me about that. You're trying to back up the fact that you're relating talent and genetic potential kind of as one and that it exists. It's not just like some fallacy. Because if they were the same thing, like, wouldn't they have the same definition? I would, I would think so. So I don't think they're the same thing, but here they go. Talent is defined as a special, often athletic, creative or artistic aptitude or the natural endowments of a person. And for the definition of genetics, you've got the study of heredity and the variation of inherited characteristics or relating to or determined by the origin, development, or causal antecedents of something. 
Maybe my problem with the word talent is that there's something like mysterious or magical about it. I'm like, listen to these definitions. You've got uh, natural endowments or special aptitude. Like, talk about sprinkling some hocus pocus dust and just watching where the where the chips fall. Like, I hate that. I don't like that. I don't like that it's mysterious. Angela Duckworth writes in her book, Grit, we prefer mystery to mundanity. Or in other words, mythologizing natural talent lets us all off the hook. It lets us relax into the status quo. Oftentimes when we talk about talent, we talk about those talented individuals over there that I can't touch. They're in a separate category that I guess I'm just not talented enough to be in that category with them. It's almost like a, an us and a them type scenario where they're untouchable. And I hate that. I hate thinking about talent that way, that uh, there's some special category that I'm never going to be able to get myself into because of that's just, they were special, special, whatever. Uh, but when I think of somebody like Keegan Swenson, I don't think of uh, some talented individual. I think of somebody who's worked his tail off more than anybody else and it's paying off. He's reaping the rewards of that hard work and dedication for years and years of development. And to say that he's talented is almost to like say, oh yeah, like all that hard work wasn't wasn't there. Like, I don't know, something about that just frustrates me. I also think that like when you put those special talented people over there in that category that we can't touch, you're also accepting defeat before the battle's even started. Like I don't look at Keegan Swinson and see like, some guy that's untouchable. I think about him as a fellow competitor that if I were to work hard enough, I could beat him. He's not special. I could race him and I could beat him. I totally believe that. So obviously I kind of think that talent is bogus. Whereas when you talk about genetics, it's scientific. It's something that we can trace back. We can look at our family history and say, oh yeah, I got these genes from my grandpa who was X, Y, and Z, and it's measurable. We can point to something on a pen and pad and say, okay, genetics. <laughs> Whereas, I don't know about talent. Like, is talent, is talent scientific? What's the metric for talent? I, I don't know what that is. We can look at somebody like a Matthew Vanderpool and see that he clearly has genetic potential. Like look at his grandparents and his family and how many cycling accomplishments they've had. We can see the history, we can see the genetics. Obviously that is right there in front of us. But can we just say, oh, uh, Matthew Vanderpool is so talented. Like what are, we, what are we measuring when we say talent? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like he, he didn't just come out of the womb good at riding bikes. Uh, obviously he came out of the womb with some genetic potential, but he wasn't just naturally good at riding bikes. A lot had to happen between then and now for him to get to where he is. In her book, Grit, again, Angela Duckworth quotes a McKinsey report that defined talent as the following, and I like this, the sum of a person's abilities. His or her intrinsic gifts, skills, knowledge, experience, intelligence, judgment, attitude, character, and drive. So while this definition does start with the word intrinsic gifts, which points back to our genetic potential of whether we will or will not be a good athlete in our lifetime, it doesn't just stop at that. It doesn't just stop at genetics. It goes on to mention skills, experience, development, uh, and all of those things can be grown. All of those things can be created through somebody's life and built up and made stronger. And I like that maybe there's this part of talent that is inherited, but also there's this other part of talent that can be developed and grown. And maybe that's how we talk about talent. There's the natural talent and the developed talent, if you want to call it that. You could even say that a part of our talent is within our control and another part of it is outside of our control. We can't control our genetics. We can't choose our parents. We can't choose our history, but we can choose how we train and how we eat and how we live our lives and our lifestyle. And maybe those were both categories of talent mashed together. And that's how we get our overall definition of what talent exactly is. So here's where I've landed on the whole talent genetics thing. I think that genetics is a part of talent, but talent is bigger than just genetics. 
David Epstein, the, the author of The Sports Gene, did a pretty interesting contest with his followers where he had them submit their definition of talent. Because again, it's not like we can just look up a, a definition. I mean, you can, but it's not really that helpful in my opinion. So I liked what he did. He said, hey listeners, what do you think talent is? And here's what the winner wrote. Talent is a set of personal characteristics that enhance one's ability to achieve expertise in, a, in, a, in an accelerated manner. Talent exists when strong genetics and a desire to practice come together to create a superior ability for a specific activity. Talent is not merely one's base ability at a task. This comes about often as a result of exposure to skills and experiences in one's early days. That is from Jonathan Black, just a student, but good definition. Epstein said that he loved that definition because of how it displays the importance of trainability. Epstein even goes on to write in his book, The Sports Gene, that better hardware sped the download of sports-specific software. I'm in this phase of life where I watch a lot of kids' movies because I've got a two-year-old little girl, uh, hence the uh, the Bluey shirt. This was my Christmas gift, by the way. We have matching Bluey shirts. Like, come on. you. This is awesome. Come on. Two-year-olds and Bluey shirts is wicked awesome. All right. Anyways, so we watch this movie, Big Hero 6. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty good. One of the main characters is this like inflatable blow up doll that's supposed to provide you good health care. Uh, but he's got a little chip that has all of his health care practice in that. And in the movie, uh, the main character, I forget his name, the little boy, uh, creates another floppy disk that he's going to put in Baymax that's going to teach him how to do ninja, ninja skills. Uh, karate and so he pops this little disc into Baymax and like Baymax turns into a superhero just like that and while that is awesome that is not the world we live in so we cannot just download into ourselves all the skills that we need to be a little to be a pro cyclist that's a bummer but that's 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 reality I'm sorry to break that to you yep and while that might not be the world we live in Epstein does make good use of this whole software downware computer analogy basically what he says that the hardware that an athlete or a person starts with is like their genetic potential things that are outside of their control that they start with that's the hardware on the other hand you've got the software things that can be downloaded or things that can be developed or added to the hardware via training and development and focus and dedication, things that can be trained. This is the software. So just like you can't have a really good computer without solid hardware and solid software, you also can't have a really good athlete without solid genetics and solid skills. Epstein even says that innate traits have value in determining who will have a better computer once the sports specific software is downloaded. When thinking about this whole concept of hardware and software or talent and hard work, it's helpful to ask some intriguing questions or hypothetical questions. One of those being if you took two individuals who have the same genetics and prescribed to them the same training, who would win? Theoretically, the answer should be that it would be a tie because if everything's are equal, then genetics and training would put them at the exact same level. But that's untrue. Even for twins, one is going to be better than the other because it's hard to get things exactly the same. But if that's not the world we live in, then maybe it's more helpful to ask the question of if you made two people train exactly the same, who would win? And the answer to that question unfortunately would be the one that has the most the best genetics for the given task at hand or the person who started with the best hardware they both downloaded the same software so who whichever one of them started with the best hardware would be the better computer or in other words the one that's the most talented should end up being the best between those two individuals and to be honest with you I can't argue with that. That That's pretty accurate, which irks me because I started the video saying I hate talent and now I'm saying that I agree with talent. Like there has to be a more talented rider between those two and genetics and talent absolutely affects our trainability. So basically the, the people who are talented, if that's what you want to call it, can train and the training works. 
they put in the hard work and that hard work works. <laughs> they get, their bodies just absorb the hard work that they put in better than other people's bodies do. And that's reality. But what I think, while I think that is absolutely true, I also believe that just because someone is the most talented person in a race, they won't always win. I totally believe that somebody who has more grit, more willpower, more skills, more race experience, all of those things could beat that more talented rider. So maybe with all of this discussion between hard work and talent and what is talent and all of that, maybe a better question to ask is how big does the deficit have to be for an untalented person to beat that talented person? Like how big of a gap? How far behind the most talented person can I be to make up with make up that gap with hard work? And man, the, the Disney princess in me really wants to say never. You will never be so far away from the most talented person that you couldn't make that up with hard work and grit and determination. And you guys are gonna hate me for saying that, but I totally believe that. I think that if you work hard enough, you could beat talented individuals. But this discussion doesn't end here. I totally plan on doing a couple more videos, at least on this idea of talent and how specifically to develop it. Or in other words, maybe maybe not develop talent. Maybe we develop grit or hard work. But anyways, future videos, I wanna talk about how we develop this in real life scenarios. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in supporting me, here are all the things that you can do. You can head to Ignition Coach Co and hire a coach because if you're watching this, obviously you wanna get faster at riding bikes. And so that's the best way to do it, get a coach. The other things that you can do is just put some money in the tip jar, you know, going over the Patreon. That's it for this one. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks.